Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Assalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa halul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Rabbi zidna ilma wa arzuqna fahma wa ja'alna min al-rashidin. Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity yet again for having another set of uh, conversations. And this time, alhamdulillah, we're blessed to have uh, Dr. Shabir Karim, uh, who currently resides in Cape Town. And he's been in the medical field all the way back, um, almost as old as I am, uh, to 1979 when he started his MBBS. Um, and so that's 41 years uh, as a doctor and then became a super specialist uh, as a pulmonologist and intensivist you know, for the last 21 years. So Alhamdulillah, it's a privilege to have the opportunity to speak with him but also get his thoughts um, as a medical doctor who's attended the Afia healing workshops and is involved you know, with understanding um, health and well-being from a holistic perspective. It'll be nice to have uh, that discussion with him, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Dr. Shabir. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa rahmatullah, brother Zahir. How are you doing? Fine, fine, alhamdulillah, your du'as. Mashallah, it's taken a while to connect with you, but alhamdulillah, grateful for the opportunity. And uh, inshallah, if you can give our viewers a little bit about your background, who you are, where you come from, where you've practiced okay, and studied, so, so we get this journey. Some idea, yes. So I'm basically from, uh, from Kenya. Uh, yeah. I am from Mombasa, Kenya. I was born in Kenya, but uh, my, my father was a Tanzanian, my mother was a Kenyan. So I was born in, in Mombasa, but I was brought up you know, on the island of Zanzibar. And um, I, I attended the schools and everything till the revolution took place in 1964. Okay. Uh, John, John O'Kello uh, and, 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 his, and his mercenaries uh, invaded uh, Zanzibar Island and they created absolute havoc and, you know, uh, killings and that's it. So you know, we, we, we all left for our, uh, we, we left, uh, we were called back by, by, by the grandpa in Mombasa. He said, you, you guys better come back over to Mombasa. So we, we went to Mombasa and I grew up from there from then on, did my prime, uh, completed my primary, my secondary school. And then I went off to India on uh, Indo-African uh, cultural program to, to pursue ultimately uh, medicine. So um, in India, um, I, 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 I took the admission in uh, Aligarh Muslim University where I did my pre-university and pre-medical. And then, uh, you know, we, get, we had uh, the foreign students have special seats as, as part of Indo-African uh, cultural programs. So I was nominated to Kashmir uh, Medical College, which comes under Kashmir University. And that's where I, I, started, uh, I started my MBBS uh, course in uh, studies. And from then on, uh, when I finished in uh, 1978, I, 79, I then then left for in eighty eight. Um, I I got married and then I and I, I I proceeded to London, where where I started um, kind of a senior house husbandship uh, in an observer's uh, situation. I worked there for almost six months before we were. I was asked for by my government in Kenya to come back to Kenya and do, instead of uh, pursuing MRSP, you might as well come and do my MED program. So I went to Kenya, uh, to Kenya in 1981. Mm. And from then on, I, 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 I started working as a resident in internal medicine and uh, ICU throughout, um, first in the government hospitals, and then later on, I moved on to private hospitals where nothing was happening really. So in the process um, of pursuing as a, as, as a resident in internal medicine, I, I, went, I went through almost uh, five years, you know, and uh, the, the government did not really offer me the, the seat, you know, as they offer, as they'd asked me when they, when they sent the delegation to London, where I was initially. So uh, I decided to, to pursue this and, and ask if I could go to, I decided to go to, to back to India and uh, uh, sought uh, the Indo-African uh, fellowship program in MD, MD uh, super specialization uh, medicine. Now, since I done so much of uh, internal medicine, already all under supervision and in all the uh, teaching hospitals, I thought if it's possible for me to get into a program which can take me directly into super, super specialty, it'd be just perfect. But then, you know, I do not have to go all over again, again into internal medicine. 
Mm. So then I luckily was uh, uh, given a seat for um, uh, respiratory med MBA respiratory medicine and, and tuberculosis at the Institute of Medical Sciences. So then I went off to Banaras Hindu University and I did my, um, I, I, I did ask, in the meantime, before I joined the, the, that program, I, I visited Canada because I was very keen to, uh, to do the pulmonology in, in, uh, in, in Canada. Yeah. So I, I took their programs there and um, I decided to come back to India and I joined when, they, when they, I got a seat, I came back to India and joined this program. So the, I did the program over four years, uh, normally it takes three years. Uh, I wanted to follow that Canadian pattern and they said, whatever pattern you follow, you are most welcome because you are a foreign student and then they, I, I completed all that. After that, you know, I went back to, uh, to Kenya where, you know, you have to, as a, as a, as a specialist, as a, as a qualified uh, super specialist, you are then have to work for a minimum of two years under, under, uh, under the professors in, in your yeah. specialty. So I, I, I decided that I'd work enough in, in pulmonology and not that much in ICU. So I joined the intensive care unit. So I worked with them. This was, the, um, this was uh, luckily the, the North American team under, okay. under whom I worked till about 1993. And then at the end of 93, uh, I went off uh, to present a paper uh, to Riyadh. Uh, and there, what I saw was they absolutely, you know, they were doing uh, lung transplants. And, you know, as an intensivist, I never had that exposure, by the way. So I told them that I could join them. And they interviewed me and they asked me if I could join them as a locum. So I did that initially and then I worked out there. So I started as a locum, and then uh, then they invited me to to, do, to join permanently only in 1995. Right. So from then onwards, I've been I've been in Saudi Arabia, and I've been I'd worked in uh, three different hospitals. I studied with the uh, uh, military hospital, and I went to security forces hospital, and finally I went to the Ministry of Health, uh, which is what what is the what, what is known as King Saud Medical City. Today. Yeah which has got the second biggest ICU in the world, by the way, after China. Wow. Okay, so then what led you um, back towards then Cape Town then? Okay, so um, it, it, just, it just so happened that uh, um, uh, when, when, I, uh, when, when I when I married uh, Sharifa uh, in, in, in Riyadh, in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Um, uh, she, she had basically no plans because everybody was very, 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 very happy and everything was very nice, apparently. But the, but the problem is that, unfortunately, um, uh, there was this uh, Saudi attack on Yemen. And it created basically a, a matter of principle for me. I mean, you know, when two Muslim yeah. nations fight, you have to take a decision where you yes. belong, you know. So because of that, you know, I decided uh, on, on principle ground, I said, you know, I have, I have to leave. So yeah. I decided to leave and relocate myself. Now I'd already visited Cape Town earlier and I, I really liked the place. I, I yes. fell in love with it immediately. Absolutely. So I told myself, why not start something here? Not realizing of course that, you know, there's going to be a very big hassle in terms of uh, the registration hassles and whatever, you know. So anyway, uh, this is how I landed here. And, um, and then uh, while I was here um, uh, in 2016, uh, I was uh, I was visiting. Uh, uh, there is a seven eight six. What do you call uh, radio station? Oh, drug shop, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Basically, I was visiting the, the, that place, and I noticed that they were they were they were uh, advertising this Afia healing and all that. So I told them, "What is this Afia healing? I never heard in my life about Afia healing. <laughs> what is it all about?" So when they told me it's energy healing and that, now you see, as a, as as an intensivist. Um, I have always believed in energy healing, but in, in, a, in, in the way, not, not the way you define and the way you explain and the way you, you, you treat. I mean, I've been using basically Quran. I'm, I'm in fact one of the first intensivists who started Quran therapy on all my ICU patients. Okay, mashallah. So, uh, so that kind of energy therapy I was yeah. talking about, right? So, uh, but I mean, not the way you would define and, you know, the way you're using the energy system for healing. Yeah. So I was very excited about it as so I decided uh, uh, to attend that program. And uh, I was very impressed to start with. But the most important thing that I liked about the program was the fact that, uh, you know, I, I am very particular about capacity building. And I, I know, inshallah, till I die, till my last breath, I shall be on, on, my, on my uphill task of capacity building. 
I never ever stop learning and I never ever stop because of mom. There is just so much you can offer. It's unbelievable. You know, I mean, this is what my job is anyway. Yes. And uh, having, having worked so long in the super specialities, uh, I had my own reservations in terms of the way uh, allopathy goes around, you know. Um, it had almost brought me to the level that I started questioning the way they operate, you know. And it was getting too commercial, by the way. You know, we don't, we didn't, I didn't seem to have realized that so much in, in Saudi Arabia, because there everything is, you know, you work with the government and everything is there. But when I came back to my country and I, there were the level of commercialism that had crept into our practices, um, I, I thought it was absolutely disgusting, you know. I, and, uh, and, you know, you cannot charge anything less because your colleagues are charging a certain amount and you just fall in, you have to charge exactly the same. And people would say, but then we need you, but we cannot afford your fees. So what am I supposed to do? So now, you know, if you start anything new, then, then, then you basically uh, fall out of in tune of your colleagues uh, because you start then undermining, the, they, they feel you're undermining them, you know? Yeah. So uh, it became very, very difficult for me. So for my personal practice, I mean, I uh, mostly then after that, I, I was practicing mostly in Kashmir because I was there part of, uh, um, they call it uh, a Gimson uh, uh uh, specialist hospital and cancer center. So I was effectively practicing there and they've got also a great training program in which I participated. I am also, I have been, uh, I have been um, advanced cardiac life support instructor for since 1998 at uh, Team yeah. Faces Specialist Hospital in, in Riyadh. Mm -hmm. So I have got all the skills and, and there's just so much to share and there's so much to train and people desperately need all this training. And you know, training programs are so expensive that Students want it, but they can't afford it. You know, exactly. so someone someone has to make a way out of all this. Mm. So uh, this is this is all that I had, and I was feeling very sad about the fact that uh, uh, this couldn't be done. You know, like you know. so I was doing that in Kashmir, and I continue to do it in Kashmir even today. So with that, um, uh, so when I joined your program, uh, I, I I felt it was absolutely amazing that you know one could do. Now, once I started practicing with other patients, I discovered that you know what. I can tell my patients that, you know, uh, you need this medication. Said, but I can't afford this medication. I said, sorry, I cannot help you. But with Afia healing, <laughs> you're using uh, the person's own energy system. You just basically channelize them, you know. Yeah. You're guiding them, channelizing them, you know, supervising them. Yeah. And using their energy system and, of course, your energy system together. Yeah. And you, 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 you go and bring about, and, and you know, the, the, there, is no, uh, there is no argument with success. When your patient feels fine, he says, I'm okay. And I said, but, but you did not pop up any, any, any pill or any injections or IV. And that was the most fascinating part about this, uh, this after healing that I felt. I said, look at, alhamdulillah, look at this, mashallah. Look at this. I mean, God has given us this, this thing right in this. I mean, we, in def we definitely have a self-healing body. We have a self-healing mind. Yeah. And we have a self-healing soul. But the thing is that all these things have to be di directed, you know, and and yeah. and, the, and and you know when you practice, uh, um, I personally find, uh, especially for myself, because I'm 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 very particular about the fact that uh, if I practice something like Asya healing, then I have to bring myself to a certain level, yeah, especially of purity, because yeah. I personally feel, despite the fact that you know Asya healing does not claim to be an Islamic or anything like that, but it is definitely not 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 non non or un Islam, you understand. Yeah. Because that means anybody can can practice this. You understand? Absolutely. So, but but the thing is that, but as a Muslim, you know, I I, I had an amazing. You see, um, I I was doing all this kind of. Thing. I'll, I'll I'll just give you an incident, which uh, yeah. which 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 was, which was the the first beginning, when I first in 1990 when I first time went back to Kenya, to practice uh, intensive care medicine. Um, I was uh, I was in a part of Nairobi hospital. Now that that ICU, you, you had you on this Magufuli, um, the currently the Tanzanian president were also brought in there just recently. Okay. He was transferred further to India. Right. So I, that was the hospital I was in. And um, it's considered the second best ICU center after South Africa, by the way. Okay. On African continent. Right. So I was part of the part of that setup, you see. Nice. So um, I was doing, I, I had gone and I'd, I was starting my day, I was doing my rounds. Now you see in the intensive care, you, uh, uh, we, we had this all, all round beds going on. Now everybody's not on ventilators. Some people are conscious. They're just sitting there, they're there for observation. So the monitors are going on, but they're sitting. 
Now, during that time, uh, a couple of uh, uh, cardiac arrests took place. So I had to immediately stop my rounds and you know immediately attend to those to those ones. So once I revived them, then I started my rounds and again another person uh, arrested. So again I had to revive that the person. Right on the fifth bed, there was an Iranian uh, 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 what do you call uh, Ayatollah who had something happen. He was visiting Kenya, but uh, 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 through to the, to the uh, what do you call it, embassy. Hmm. And he had developed some 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 problems, some cardiac problems. So he was brought into the ICU as well. Yeah. So he was watching me. So by the time I reached him, he asked me a very simple question. He said, "Doctor, I've been watching you. I mean, you're doing amazing work here, my friend." I said, "No, all intensivists you have to do this. This is this is the life. This is our bread and butter. This is how you work, by the way." So he's telling you know, if I were there, I would have really literally frozen. I thought that guy died, you know, but you, were, you, you and your team brought him back. You revived him, you know, resuscitated him. I said no, but you see, if you if you develop this kind of thing in this situation, we have everything is ready available. You know, you don't waste any time. So within seconds, you know, you are on the move. Mm. So I said this is how it helps. And then when Allah wants, they, they leave, and Allah doesn't want, they, they go. You see, I mean, yeah. they, it's not in our hands. So he told, he asked me a very interesting question. He said, "Do you realize?" He said, I, "He said, are you a Muslim?" I said, "Yes, Alhamdulillah, I am." Yeah, he told me, "Do you realize how privileged you are?" I said, "From what angle?" Because I had never ever no patient had ever put such a question to me, such a question. He said, "Do you know how privileged you are as a Muslim?" I said, "How?" He said, "Each time a patient dies in your hands, you are effectively doing ziara of Malikul Maut." Do you realize that? I mm -hmm. said, I have never thought like that. Yeah. It has never struck me. He said, are you in a state of wudu? I said, no, I'm not. He yeah. said, how about always being in a state of wudu while working in the ICU? And mm -hmm. that was the beginning. Mashallah. So from then onwards, I decided I will never enter ICU without being in a state of wudu. Because, you know, then after we get help people to recite shahada, and then I know they are going on, that all kind of things that was happening. But that was the beginning. And from then on, you know, I started thinking so much, what are the things you can do Islamically as an intensivist, you yeah. know? So there are so many things that you can do, basically. Alhamdulillah. So, 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 so you know, when, when I got exposed to your, your energy system, yeah. I told myself, you know what? Uh, it's amazing that, you know, I, I may not have any drugs in my hands, yeah. and yet I can contribute in somebody's relief. Absolutely. Because I've got all this knowledge, yes. and I can use it. Yeah. And I can use it beautifully well, you know. Absolutely. So that's how I and, and then you know the, the more the more of uh, patients you see and the more the, the the people and you know the 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 best part about all this thing is that to start with the, the, the people the people would, would look at it with doubt. You said, "But you are a pulmonary. What, what language is this supposed to be?" I mean, you know, they used to be very surprised. Yeah. The fact that I'm talking about energy, he said, "But okay. you are a pulmonary intensive. What do you have to do with this?" Yeah, you know it's you know we we normally we in, indoctrinate people into into compartments. Absolutely, so they they are not open minded. They don't understand yeah. that you know if you have holistic practice, anything that your patient needs and you are capable of doing practice that because you want your patient to feel better. Absolutely, isn't yeah. it? The, yeah. So any knowledge that and that's why I said that when you talk about when I personally talk about capacity building, I mean you know I would I would acquire any knowledge that I can help whereby I can help my patient. And I, I don't have to be, you know, I've, re I've reached a level in life that I don't have to be worried about what will what will my seniors and exactly. my colleagues say. Oh, now he started practicing, uh, you know, you know this uh, this uh, energies and I don't know <laughs> alternative medicine. What happened to him? Yeah, you understand that kind yeah. of thing. So yeah. you you got very few guys who have got open minded to understand Absolutely. that you know when it comes to healing. It's, it's, it's with you and your God and your knowledge and your experience and, and yeah. how well you can do. And the, I think the most important part is basically your niya, you know, it's intention. Absolutely. And in Islam, nothing happens. You don't do a thing without an intention. Yeah. So you, once your intentions are right, you know, you are already working towards that. And, 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 and this is how, so be it, be it, uh, be it in, 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 in Kenya or be it in, in India or be it here in South Africa, when it came to energy practicing, you know, the uh, after healing uh, practice, I mean, I've seen some uh, some very interesting um, results. And and, yeah, and so please, yeah, share share that with us because I think that's interesting. Um, because you've got this knowledge of medicine that you were a trainer yourself, that you know you've you've um, you know been supervised and supervised others, and you've been in. You see, uh, it's it, it's it's very interesting. I think. Um, 
I, I think I was uh, I, I was in Kenya, right? Yes, I, I, I was in Kenya, and um, we we were we were on a beach somewhere, right? And um, so we were basically like like tourists, and uh, suddenly somebody developed severe pain. Okay. All right, severe pain. Now, can you imagine you're on the beach? You don't have anything. They don't know who I am. They, they don't know who I am. Yeah. So I, I said, um, uh, this was a lady, by the way. So yeah. I said, um, how can I help? And I said, no, I, I have to get an ambulance. And, you know, I need to get an ambulance. And somebody has to come over. And, you know. What sort of pain was it? Where, where, what happened? You know, it was, no, it, it was, I, I think it was, it, it, it was a sudden knee pain, I think. A sudden okay. knee pain. Yeah. So the person was walking on the beach and suddenly sat down. Oh, okay. And couldn't walk anymore. He said, I've just developed a severe uh, knee pain, you know. I said, did you injure yourself in the past? He said, maybe in the past, but I mean, this has never been a problem like this. Mm. And you know, basically what had happened, I think she had walked a bit in the water, then she came out and she chilled, you know. And now okay. if you have all injuries, yes, I mean, you suddenly chill. Yeah. Suddenly develop pain, those people. Yeah, those that's places. right. So, you know, so that that's one of the, I, I don't think she realized that. Mm. Now, you know, I was not here to tell her all the, all the theories and whatever. So I said, maybe I can help. He says, are you a doctor? I said, ah, yes. But now I was wondering, how can, what am I supposed to tell you? Because she expects an injection or some yeah. me, or tablet or, yeah. you know, something like that. You know? yeah. so I just examined, there was a bit of, a bit of swelling over there. Yeah. And I said, uh, uh, I don't know if you have injured or not, but I said, uh, can, can, I, can, can I do some, uh, some energy healing? This is energy healing. Yeah. I mean, are you doing, are you going to do any, I mean, you know, it is, it's a disbelief, <laughs> yeah. you know, so I said, but by the way, whatever that I do, you'll have to believe me because if you yeah. don't believe me, I cannot help you. Yeah. So, you know, the first pre precondition, yeah. believe in the process, you know, yeah, if yeah. it's supposed to help you, yeah, yeah. Because you have to believe in it. I mean, yeah. I, you know, so she says, yeah, I don't mind. I just need relief. You know, I don't care about anything right now. I said, then yeah. you have to believe. Yes. Please believe that yeah. I, I'll be able to help you. Yeah. And so I, I, I immediately, I, I, I said, you know, how, how do I start? So I, I immediately started, you know, uh, uh, sending energies to, uh, to the knee, right? And, and I, I just told her, I said, can you breathe with me? Mm. Breathe with me. See? Yeah. So I just told her. So she started breathing. She, I said, relax, be calm, and, 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 and we'll help you. And, and I started applying energy on that. And also praying, by the way, because, you know, this was my sudden experience. I was not okay. expecting that to happen. Yeah. And, you know, the, the lady, just after 10 minutes, 10 minutes, he says, I said, now, can you stretch your legs and all that? He says, yeah, he's fine. He I can do that. And then in the meantime, now I started trying to find out if, uh, you know, I was, I was very hesitant because I don't know, you know, she doesn't know me and, you know, I yeah. cannot ask any personal questions. Yeah. I it just said, by the way, you have met. So yeah. that within 10 minutes, the lady was already feeling fine. Now yeah. tell me any tablet that I could have given at that time. I have to exactly. go and pick it up. You know what I mean? And we get yeah. it or call an ambulance and all this. So what I'm saying is here is the capacity that I had. Yeah. Here is the knowledge that I had that I applied in the name of God. Yes. And the patient was person was fine. I mean, patient was was relieved. Alhamdulillah. All right. Now the question is, it is these kind of incidences in my life that people expect something else to happen, and then I, I talk about and they tell me, what are you talking about? Yeah. So 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 so, so those kind of things, you know. So in in day in day to day life. There are a lot of times, and I do normally do it very quietly, by the way, because I do not want to tell people that, oh, I'm an Afya practitioner, I'm, I'm I, I also am learning. About. By the way, I'm still a student of Afya healing. So um, uh, so I say that, you know, I'm, I'm a student of Afya healing, and, uh, you know, uh, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can give you uh, a feel of that and tell yeah. me whether you feel better or not. And uh, up to now, I can assure you that whomever that I have done with, Right, yeah. and this has always been on the move. Never in a problem. It's always been in the move, you know. Where right. I, different kinds of people. Mm -hmm. I had another incident also, also in Delhi. A person developed a severe headache. Yeah, again a lady, severe headache, and you know, we, our, our, I think I was in a, I was in a train. Yeah, severe headache, and she started crying, and I, uh, so everybody said, well, some of people start saying, do you have Panadol, this, that, and so I said. Um, can I help? He said, are you a doctor? I said, now you see the moment you say, yes, I'm a doctor, then you yeah. know the expectations are different. Exactly. Yeah. 
So, so again, you know, what I'm trying to tell you is that uh, Afia healing as such is, it belongs to anybody and everybody who is prepared to take the responsibilities. Absolutely. You know, if you're prepared to take the responsibilities, and I personally very strongly feel that, uh, you know, um, I remember uh, uh, on, on, the, on the first day of the class, you said, uh, you have to do A, B, C, D, E. You have to do that. You know, if yeah. you, yeah, you, you know, like, you have to first to clear yourself. You have to be, you have to know what you're doing and all that, yeah. you know, intentions and all that. And then the knowledge and then the skills yeah. and all that, okay? Yeah. So it's all a set of things that you have to do. But most important is that, you know, you make sure that you are anchored. Absolutely. You make sure you are anchored because you do not know whom you are dealing with. <laughs> you might fly over with them, you know? Yeah. Because you are dealing with them. So it's very important to know yourself, how you're anchoring yourself and, you know, and, and what it exactly means to you. And then whatever that you do, what are your intentions? Yeah. And, 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 and you are there just to help. Uh, you are just being a, basically a good Samaritan. I mean, you're not trying to do anything else. You're trying to relieve somebody. And that itself, by the way, the joy that was shared for instance, that lady with severe headache, yeah five minutes and it was gone Mashallah. but what i'm saying is that basically um it, it's amazing really um it, it's, it's just that people have to experience this you see on on, on that on that note i remember once uh, a very dear friend of ours lives in london he phoned me once or sent me a message he said Zuhair, please make dua i've got a headache i said okay no problem right and i left it and then it's forgotten two weeks later Okay, two weeks later, I get a call, I get a message uh, from his sister-in-law who said, can you please make dua for him? He's really not well. I said, what do you mean? He said that headache, he is half the man he was. Half the man. In, and, and that's when it struck me. I said, subhanAllah, I didn't even follow up. I mean, like someone says, I've got a headache and you say, okay, yeah, fine. Uh, you know, and I'm sure it'll be gone in the next three days max. But for 14 days after, after that time that he messaged me, I then started to inquire. I said, tell me what's exactly happened. He goes that he, he, he was taken to the hospital because he was so severe. And what they found out is that they had three, um, what do you call it, uh, trap nerves in the head. Wow. Three trap nerves in the head, right? Like it's, it's, it's completely like he's frozen like this. And because of the headache, he's not eating, he's not able to sleep. And on top of that, he's got a trap nerve in his groin. So he can't wow. walk. So he was a oh. guy, mashallah, bigger than me. And at that point, as soon as I got that message on the phone, I put the phone down and I, I left. I, I drove straight down to him. And I went down and I, and I, and I asked, and I, as soon as I went in, he's shocked to see me, right? Like, hold on, I just, uh, what happened? I said, what's wrong with you? And he couldn't walk. He had to be carried down. So he came down and he sat down. And, and straight away, now, like what you're saying is, you are just thrown in the deep end. Yes. What are we doing with this? Yes. So straight away, I put, I put my hand to the back of his uh, head, the occipital, mm -hmm. and say, Bismillah, and because he can't stand, we can't do a realignment of the body, this is mm -hmm. priority. Mm -hmm. And I started working on it, four minutes, five minutes, and he goes to me, uh, and I'm thinking, why is he making these noises, right? Because this can be like, mm -hmm. it's to do with the brain, and maybe, you know, we don't want to stroke or anything. Mm -hmm. He goes, I can't feel anything, right? And I go, oops, right? So I'm thinking now, am I insured and am I <laughs> indemnity policy in place? And, but subhanAllah, he goes, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I go, okay, where are we? He goes, the pain is gone. I go, huh? So now I think he's playing with me, right? Because at that point in time, it's still early on in my training. And I'm thinking, what's happened here? But again, like you said, intention, trust the process. Yeah, place the trust in Allah. And he just fell back into the bed. He goes, my pain is gone. I said, okay, but he goes, my, my leg is still hurting. So then I placed my hand near the, you know, on the side of the thigh and then did the work there. And literally 10 to 12 minutes later, he sits up on the bed. He goes, he's like, he doesn't know what's hit him, right? He goes, I've been to the doctors. I went to the hospital. I've had the MRI scans. I then went to all the sheikhs and they prayed and they blew water on me and they did chuf chuf on me. And what what have you so anyway he walks out of the room bear in mind he's been picked up and carried into that room he walks back into the other room people are waiting mm. in the other room hoping mm. not hoping but you know that they, they'd imagine that these were his last moments and he's come back <laughs> Alhamdulillah. so you think what did we do there what did i do i went with an intention ya allah someone close to me someone dear to my heart is not well 
I went with that intention. I placed my hand. We did the breathing exercises. You could feel the energy going into his head. And then the rest is to Allah. Healing is from Allah, isn't it? Exactly. And, and, so, and, and you experience this. I this experience are, it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know, there is, there is no argument with success. You know, no. nobody will argue with you about this. I mean, people sometimes, you know, um, I personally feel they are it's a misinformed, you know. Uh, they, 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 they speak some unkind words, you know, about... Oh, you people, you do not know what the hell you guys are doing. And, you know, this is, this is uh, abracadabra and all this kind of, you know, two two is, you know. Yeah. But, but the question is, you ask the patient who gets relief. Absolutely. He, that patient, he or she is your best testimonial. Absolutely. And there is no question about it. You, know, they, you, and you don't have to convince the world. No. You tell them, this is what I have to offer. Yeah. And I feel you'll be fine. Yeah. Taste it. Absolutely. Take a taste of it. Yeah. And you will be surprised. I can assure you that, you know, whoever that I've asked have, have, have a feel of this. They've, 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 never, they've never denied this. They said, no, I definitely agree with this system, whatever that you are practicing. Yeah. So we don't know this much about yeah. this. Because I'll tell you one thing, you know, you have to remember that uh, everybody talks about energy system. It's a, very, it's a very wide, wide field. Very wide field, you know. Is the way they practice? What are the things they require? Yeah. And you see, one of the one of the things that I, I personally felt very comfortable, especially when I attended uh, my, my my program with you, was the fact that it was my it was a first exposure to me as far as energy energy uh, what you call therapy was concerned. I didn't yeah. I didn't know nothing about it. Yeah. I I always knew that you know I I do I do energy healing through through prayers and through all other things yeah. through Quranic reading and all that. But this particular way of, doing, I mean, using my own hands and, and you know, pointing yeah. it and using my own energy and directing it. And, yeah. But the question is the intention with which you are going. Absolutely. Your intention is to heal this person. Yeah. I mean, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, abundantly, you know, uh, provides for those people who are out to help his creation. I mean, Absolutely. this is the greatest ibadah. So yes. this is this is not only on, doesn't only become a profession of yours. See, so this is for me. I mean, uh, can you imagine um we have we have so much of problems in terms in the intensive care unit you know if you are in intensive care and all your, your staff are not muslims mm. and you die yeah it's so sad yeah it's terrible basically by the way but there's nobody want to recite the shahada for that person yeah. unfortunately because there's, there's there's no muslim uh you know staff yeah. in there to understand yeah. this now these are very very uh you know um, sensitive things right and yet to have that knowledge to be around, to be able to help, yeah. you know, uh, it's, 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 it's an amazing feat, by the way. And, yeah. and that's why I personally feel that there is an innet, inbuilt barakah in this, in, in this, in this practice, you know. That, uh, no, and, and that's true. And I think the other thing that you said is that, you know, there's a constant need to develop ourselves. And, and this is what I find, because in the years that I've been teaching, I find that with every client that I see, for every person that I train, for every person that becomes a practitioner, for every practitioner that goes out and, and spreads that love and that healing in their communities. I feel that we are consistently required to up our game. Oh, sure. Oh, and sure, sure, it. sure, sure. And, and, and this is what's happening, is that the moment your own personal uh, agenda comes in, your personal vava comes in that, you know, I am something now, this is when the blocks start happening. Still. And it is so okay. important to keep on top and check off your nafs and all the other dunya that, that, is, that is pulling us down. You know, I, I tell you, one of the, one of the, one, one of the, one of, one of the most, I mean, as far as uh, my impression of that, um, of, of the course that I took was, I thought you really hit the nail on the head the moment you say, you said, no matter what, things that you are able to perform at the end of the day you are the conduit of allah he sends his made through you you are I nobody i think i said so, gutter. <laughs> gutter. <laughs> gutter. that's the word you, feel avoiding you are the gutter you know so, I mean, once you understand that you said that is the level of humility you must practice you know yeah and that's what i was saying that you know um, i i personally feel that um, this is a field that uh, one constantly grows, but it also demands a lot of personal purity. 
Yeah. And I mean purity, holistic purity, you know, mental, physical, and spiritual. Yeah. You know, um, you see, until unless we understand sanctity, yeah. You know, if you understand that, I mean, I mean, as 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 as, as, as an intensivist, I, I personally, uh, one of my one of my uh, uh, interest uh, in in my field was end of life care. Yeah. Now, end of life care demands that you know you uh, your patients are is so sick, so sick that you have to start talking to the family. You already have to start preparing them for grief. Just yeah. remember, grief is an art and science by itself. People just talk about grief, but it's too important. And you understand, and I understand because grief, uh, in, in the emotional chart, you will see they'll always show you on the lungs. When when you have grief, the injured organ is your lungs. Yeah. Now, it's very interesting, by the way. So, you know, if you connect the dots, I, you start understanding that it is so important that you... Uh, you expose your 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 uh, the family of your very very sick patients, you know, to um, uh, to to the forthcoming or potential grief that might happen because you are likely to lose this patient because you know you are struggling so hard yeah. and you are getting nowhere really, you know. But the advantage still is that as a practitioner, you always have a capacity to build. You don't yeah. say, oh, I know all this, you know, I, I've experienced. Yeah. Believe me, it, is, it doesn't work like that. No. You need to continue going higher and higher and higher. And yeah. don't look back and don't compare yourself with somebody else. You are unique. Yeah. Allah has given you this responsibility to you, not, not that you should. See, unfortunately, um, we are so much influenced by the Western system, right? We like comparing ourselves. Oh, yeah. you know, he did that. You know, he yeah. got, he got, we got the Nobel, he's a Nobel laureate, you yeah. know, he's, you no, know, we compare ourselves. It's it's not that. Ultimately, you know, it drags us towards egoism. You know, you start thinking about yourself. Then that's what I think confuses us. That's so you say, I'm doing this, but you know, I treated so many people. And so, but as you say, first you say alhamdulillah and say mashallah. Don't yeah. don't tell that you are something, you know, this is the this is the, you know, Hazam I and Fazli Rabbi. You know, okay. this is the puzzle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, it's sure. not yours. No. So if you remember that you are the gutter. You can't go wrong. You know, no. it's, uh, yeah, that, that keeps you in place. <laughs> yeah, it places you. I mean, it, it keeps your feet on the ground, you know, uh, basically. So, so this is what... the thing that you've mentioned, uh, which is, which is, I think, maybe we can take our discussion down that line. Uh, one is the energy side that we've already talked about. But again, you've now touched on grief and emotions such as anger yes. and how you see that in your patients, um, you know, manifest in uh, fibromyalgia, in arthritis, in cancer, in high BP, you know, in all of these conditions that we're talking about. And again, in the workshop, you know, that, that we, we touch on emotions very yes. deep. But then also what I think you've probably picked up a lot is with every physical pain that a patient is showing you and coming to you, there's an underlying emotional cause behind exactly. it. Exactly, well. exactly. So talk to us about that, please. Yeah, so, so you see, um, uh, one, one, of the, one, one of the one of the things that uh, I, I personally found is that, uh, you know, ears, ears of pain, and you know, we, we the, the saddest part is that we as doctors accept it. disaster. That is the disaster. You know, you accept it. Why? Because you know, our our curriculum has been so much uh, parochialized yeah. that it did not allow us to see outside yeah. those because practitioners I... who are practicing you know, holistic medicine, yeah. integrative medicine. Yeah. Their aim is how can I make the patient better? Whichever skill I can use, yeah. whatever methodologies, whichever schools of medical school that I can use, not necessarily only allopathy, you know, yeah. get out of allopathy. Yeah. But the problem is that you see, we in allopathy, there are certain things that you have to remember. We have created a mindset about ourselves. Yeah. We are knowingly or unknowingly very arrogant, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And what Allah tells you, it is not possible to be knowledgeable and be arrogant. It doesn't go hand in hand. Yeah. So if you, especially now you're dealing with the most sacred creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then with that level of sanctity, you are being given that opportunity to, to, to try to heal that person, you know? Yeah. So, so you use all these different skills and pray to Allah that he would heal that person, okay? Mm -hmm. So you are, again, that energy system, then you are trying yeah. to set things right here. Yeah. 
So the question is that you talk about these different organs and you take these different aspects of emotions, take it anger, take it anxiety, take it grief, you know, take it the depression, and you see the organs involved as well. Yeah. You see, so once you start mapping those, those organs with those emotions, yes. I call them, they are injured. Yeah. One of the worst thing, worst thing, that it, um, it's sad, it's sad that I, uh, you know, we see this in, in among the Muslims, you know. See, one of the most interesting part is cow, you know, word. Yeah. In Islam, what Quran tells you, your word is, is witnessed. Yeah. It's very valuable. Yeah. So be careful. Whatever that you speak is only ahsan. Mm. What you don't know, when you cannot speak something good, stay quiet. Yeah. But there's no need to speak. Now that you see in the in the in the Sunnah of the Prophet So the question is, when when we get this kind of patients with this kind of pains, and you start taking history, and one of the advantages that I have is that I can take a fantastic history, family yeah. history, yeah. personal history, you know, all this kind of histories. And what I discover is that these people are basically traumatized. Awesome. You're talking about abuse. There has not been nobody has ever touched her. You know, there's not a single mark on the on the on the body. Yeah. But internally, they are scarred. Yes. Scarred, scarred. Because yes. can you imagine if I claim, show to the world how much I love my wife, but in that one day I speak twenty words which absolutely, you know, decimates her. Yeah. These are injuries on a daily basis that you see no scars on the on the skin. Absolutely. On the outside. Absolutely. It is this that people, I find, you know, where, where, you, where your Afia healing, you know, the emotional healing comes in. Because your emotional healing starts working on that. What are the different techniques that then we use? It's something yeah. else. Yeah. But the question is the primary understanding and observation. Yeah. Is that this is where the problem is. Absolutely. And the way you approach it has to have its own sensitivity, by the way. Yeah. People don't want to talk about it. They said, it's how did you know? I, I never told you. Yeah. Because they don't understand. Now you are fathoming pretty deep. Why? Because you're looking at the organ. That's it. And you are looking at the emotions, and now you are connecting them. Yeah. Right. And now, when you when when you go towards start relieving them, you first of all, what do we do? We, we do these different techniques now, like we we use stepping for one of them. Yeah. But most of them is you want to relieve them. Yeah. You relieve want them. them to dissociate themselves from those painful experiences. To be yeah. they're attached. Yeah. But because you don't see scar outside, you nobody talks about no, it comes to me. And if I'm an allopathic doctor, what is it? Yeah, fine. No, the x-ray is fine. This is fine. And this take this tablets. Now I, I give you one tablet one day, then you take one week, then one month. Then it's, you know, I think this has become chronic. Yeah. So now you have to take it for life. I've basically killed you. That's it. Yeah. You, you understand the point. Absolutely. And the question is: now I did not have the humility to say, you know what? I don't know the where word, but there are there are practitioners who look into these things and they yeah. can relieve you without any medications. Yeah. That I will not do because that's where arrogance comes in. That's it, yeah. You see the point? So it is it is this particular aspect that really awakened me, you know. And I, I, I was very excited about the fact that Alhamdulillah, you know, there is a there is a way out here without me. I didn't have to walk in anybody's stores, I didn't have to make any announcements. I just practice and people still felt better. And I said, that's what I need. <laughs> I, I don't need anybody's certificates. I mean, I, I, I've got what I need to do. Yeah, but the question is that I can do it. But that again, I said, it continues to stay in the state of purity. It is very important. Yeah. So at the end of the all, all, all this practice that we're doing, it, you know, how, you might be very good in your skills, in whatever thing, but if your near is not right, your results would be questionable. Absolutely. So, you know, it, I, I personally feel that it is, it is almost directly proportional to your level of intention, your purity, yeah. your sincerity, your humility, you know? Yeah. And, and, and the most important part is we should avoid RIA. RIA, you know, this show offs. Yes. That is so much invested in medicine. Oh, you know, I'm doing research over there. You know, I'm part of Howard. And, yeah. It nonsense. It never, we never end, man. It's never ending, you know. I do it and my colleague does it with me and yeah, you know, it's shocks. You know? Yeah, regardless of whatever piece of paper you have and which institution you went to, people are still dying. People are exactly. still 
exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, I personally feel that, you know, we lose out on a daily basis. Yeah. You know, I personally feel that I, this is a very quiet way of doing it, you know. Yeah. I, you know, energy healing is uh, emotional healing. I mean, it's, you do it very quietly. There is no fanfare. You don't, you don't announce to the world. Yeah. You maintain people's uh, uh, privacy. You maintain Absolutely. their security. I mean, you do all those things. Yeah. This is where you get rewarded for it, by the Absolutely. way, because you, 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 those restraints, for instance, you know, like in, imagine like in Islam, we say, never start anything without saying salam. Why, why salam? Because that is the security you are offering to the other person. That's why you're getting 97% salam for initiating a salam. The other person, poor fellow, has to reply, it is wajib, it's obligatory, but he gets only 3%. Yeah. Because he, you, you who's establishing a contract. He's saying you are safe from my from my bad eye, from my bad ear, from my bad tongue, with my bad hand, my bad, you know, from all this, you are safe. Yeah. So and, it's and that I think, kind of I think I think as Muslims, you know, that that actually come across and they try to create a barrier in front of what we do as practice of energy healing, saying it is haram and whatnot, right? I think this people need to understand the whole concept of what Islam is and to give the salam. Exactly. Because when you are sending out salam to someone you are sending out a particular type of energy yes. it is a peaceful <laughs> type of energy allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his two names which are jamal and jalal yes. they contain energy yes you know and and and, and we we are very quick to forget or to to push aside this whole concept of energy in islam anyway that when we are working and when i when i say to you assalamu alaikum i want peace to fall upon you i want peace to be upon you Yes. And so that has to really come from my whole being. Because exactly. there are times when people will say, Assalamu alaikum, and it is empty. There is nothing there. They are it, saying it because they it's have. It's a verbal to. declaration. That's it. And it's like people now, you know how they've degraded the word inshallah. Meaning that if someone says inshallah, you know it's not going to happen, right? And it's they don't. Disaster, absolutely disaster. And, and there are certain people who will say, Assalamu alaikum, and you just feel that peace fall on you. Why? Because it has come from their whole being. So like you said, humility is there, the intention is there, but the sincerity by which you actually want this to happen. And as the Prophet ﷺ said to the nearest meaning, that the master of a people is he who serves them, not the other way around. You see, so on the Western side, the top doctors are the ones that they should be served and they should be massaged and whatnot. But what I like about you know, our alternative approach is that it is us that is getting the opportunity to serve others. And it doesn't have to be uh, announced. I mean, the, the reason why I bring this uh, subject to people's attention is to remind awareness. them. Awareness. No, there is no awareness. Awareness. That, that there is a way out. You do not have to carry on suffering. You know, we've had, and I, I remember, you know, in, in, um, in Johannesburg, we had a lady attend our workshop. And she said that I've, I've been in pain for 28 years. Okay. I got married and soon after the marriage, my husband passed away. And since then, you know, I've just been treated badly, et cetera, et cetera. And I have traveled, I've gone to India for, you know, for medical treatments and this, that, and the other. And in that emotional healing session that I did for her in clearing, it took five minutes. And when she opened her eyes, she was, she looked like, where am I type of thing? Because now the whole perspective had changed. The whole dimension had changed. And she looked at me and, and she has got tears rolling down her eyes and she goes, huh? And I said, make dua for me. And she goes, what do you want? Right? Because I knew that in that moment, she had so much clarity. She was so connected to Allah through her heart. And I asked her what I wanted. Right? And she just closed her eyes and she's sitting there making dua for me. And I did the same with that person who had that headache. Yes. The moment she's like, huh? Huh? I said, can you just make a dua for me now, please? Now, this moment of purity, intention, clarity, you depth in your heart, you are feeling it. I need that dua. And subhanAllah, she made that dua. And you know, since then, mashallah, it's been many years, uh, since 2015, 16, she did the workshop. And then subhanAllah, a couple of years ago, she had a very bad accident coming from, uh, you know, Middleburg. And she ended up in ICU herself. Right, her, and in that in that uh, journey, her sister passed away sadly, and she her bones were broken, and you know she was in a very bad state. But Subhanallah, she made that recovery. The whole Afia team would send energy healing for her and make du'a for her. And then what she's doing is she's looking around the ICU unit, 
And she's saying, you know what? That person needs help. She goes and she's doing afia for them there. She's going across there and she's doing afia for them there. This is subhanallah. You know, you think yeah. alhamdulillah. You know, she's been empowered. She sees the value of it. Exactly. exactly. And, and, and in that IC unit, she's doing, <laughs> she's doing this thing. Beautiful. Beautiful. And, and, and that, you know, you say alhamdulillah. You know, this, this is the legacy that we've been passing on. Yes. yes. And, and, and that's what's coming to use. Amazing, amazing, mashallah. So you you, you see, uh, um, it's it's uh, the practices as, as as you go. You know, um, I as I said, I'm still a student and I'm still learning a lot of things. By the way, all right. Mm -hmm. But believe me or not, you, you see, with me, when I learn, uh, you see, I don't learn at like uh, like on the ground floor. I learn at fifth floor. You know. Yes. Uh, because I I've already covered all this. You know. Yeah. When I when when a concept reaches me, then I the way I catch it is like fifth floor, you know. Yeah. But then at the same time, as I said, each time comes responsibilities. Yeah. You know? Because then you know it when when you when you're getting a small weight, it's easy, you know. But when you suddenly carry a big weight, so that like as I said, if you 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 start discovering the thing as on the as a as fifth floor, then yeah. the way you know you transmit it and the way you use it. And yeah. the way you uh, express it have to be, have to have that that uh, a lovable uh, sensitivity, you know, Absolutely. and uh, and respect for that. So uh, and I find I find that 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 very important, very important. By the way, Absolutely. so well, it's a uh, it's, it's it's amazing basically, you know. And I say that you know I wish I wish more people know about this, and the more people discover, you know, one of the thing which I feel very sad about is that. Um, Throughout, you look at our, our medical curriculum, mm. and I, I, when I'm, I'm basically addressing allopathy because that's yeah. what I know yeah. from from back scratch. Yeah, we never, we never talk about God. And now, as as we talk about more and more uh, technology and medical technology, we are talking less and less and less about God, and we're talking more and more about now artificial intelligence. Yes. Try to understand this. Yes. All right. Now we are talking more about artificial intelligence. So we're effectively coming to a level where we are becoming effectively heartless. We talk about being heartless, you know, because heart. Whenever we talk about heart, this not this. The heart means God. That's what it means. It means kal, yeah, kal is salim as we call it, yeah. right? So, uh, but but we don't mention that. We yeah. all have it. But yeah. then you know what Allah says, when you when you don't mention me, then it gets starts getting rusted, you know? And this rust is taking like, over. Like, like they've taken the belief away from Allah, but now have placed the belief into an alternative, which is AI. Exactly. <laughs> which is which is very frightening for us. Well, right I mean, it's, it's a shame because they're still having to believe in something. You you, you see, it's in that, you see? <laughs> belief is in that, yeah? It's just replacement. Yeah. And that's where, you know, that's what we really have to pray to Allah subhanahu wa to protect us. Because um, basically we are heading for either way shipping. I'm telling you, this is what yeah. we are heading for. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we are, we, are, we are gradually, you know, it's, you know, that, that frog out of water experience, Absolutely. right? It's that kind of thing. You know, they're yeah. gradually are boiling, then by the yeah. time it, it's too late, you know. Yeah. But if I just give you a shot, you just fly out, you know, yeah. you are safe. Yeah, it's, that's not, not uh, happening. Yeah. So as far as our practice in in, in, in after healing is concerned, I feel there is just so much scope. There is just so many so many vistas that we still have to cross. Absolutely. You know, there are these different um, uh, you know uh, energy energy levels. Uh, you know the and and I think basically I, I personally feel and uh, it's strange that you know I got connected again into this because right from my you know I. I, I got into uh, quantum physics and quantum mechanics. Okay. And um, it just happens that uh, my, my, my niece is a, is a, is a, is a, is a physics engineer, is, is, is a physicist. Yeah. So um, I started sitting, to her, sitting with her and I said, uh, can I be a student of quantum physics? Yeah. So she just smiled. She said, he said, uncle, come on, man, stop joking. Yeah. I said, I'm not joking. I'm desperate. I need yeah. to understand the concepts, all these things. It's very important for me. And now when you're talking about, you see, this is where we are heading for, basically. So when you talk about Afia, Afia healing, yeah. you know, this is good. You are still, we are still on the surface. Yes. 
But but basically, this is what our direct is. I was telling you, when I understand something, I understand the fifth floor. I don't understand yeah. the ground floor. Absolutely. So you might think you are telling me a new concept. For me, yeah. it's not a new concept at all. Yeah. yeah. It's something that has been already, you know, tested and tried and, you know. Yeah. But now it's something that you, when you put it into action, mm. you have you have to be even more careful because exactly. now you're dealing with something more powerful. Yeah. See? So I think this is what we need to start understanding it, that you are now talking about quantum. Oh, absolutely. And uh, and uh, where we are going, that's where exactly we are going. Yeah, yeah. We're already there. But you see, the thing is that when, when we have to present the workshop, then, then there are certain words we don't use. Yes. Okay, because, because we are not, not everyone is ready to perceive that knowledge at that capacity. Sure, sure. So, so, the, so I think the beauty of Afia healing is whether you're an intensivist, you've got 40 years of medical experience, or you're a housewife, or you're a student of medicine. I have psychiatrists, we have psychotherapists coming to the workshop because they are wondering what is it that you are doing with our patients that we could not do over 20 sessions. Exactly. And by the way, I hope, I hope you have then in the process understood when you see the route they take, it is, it is so complicated. Absolutely. You know, you know why? Because their aim is not to help that patient really. Uh, Try to understand this. Yeah. Try to understand this. Because we have commercialized care. Yeah. We have to, do you realize why was there such a great need of saying, oh, now, now we are not talking about eye-centered care. We are not going to be about patient-centered care. What the hell? I mean, from the day one, it was a patient-centered care. Yeah. But because there, my ego, my eye was very, very prominent. Yeah. Now I'm trying to hide behind this patient care. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But intentions have not changed, remember. <laughs> you see the point? Yeah. And it is this that is taking time. As I was telling you, Shifa is directly proportional yes. to your sincerity, your yeah. purity, yeah. and your, uh, what I call, your dignity, you know, that, yeah. uh, that you, you perceive of your patients. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And at what level do you want to place them? Yeah. And how much do you really want them to help, to help mm -hmm. them? Oh, but I've done these things, and why is it taking so long? Of course, it would be so long because you know, we go direct to the what is your problem here? Uh, let's start talking about it. God yeah. help. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's very, very simple. Uh, how many times you, you find that uh, when we try to reach God, we try to create so many obstacles to reach Him that you ultimately get frustrated? I said, why can't I just speak to him? What is the problem? He said, speak to him. He's closer to you than his jugular. That's why he gives you the example. I am closer to you than your jugular vein. Yes. Why don't you understand this? Yes. You understand? It is this that we need to, we need to um, awaken. Yeah, absolutely. To make people aware. It's awareness. It's total awareness and it's becoming present. And I think once we begin to shatter these veils uh, of physical problems that we have and emotional burdens that we carry, that's when the spirit aligns. That's when we can become present truly. Exactly. And ultimately, our deen is about becoming present. Our deen is about knowing Allah. But while we are surrounded and we are polluted with physical aches and pains and emotional issues, people are not connected fully. Sure. And Alhamdulillah, with Afia Healing, what I'm finding more and more is that the more we work on ourselves and we break down these barriers and these uh, veils in our way, people mm -hmm. are Alhamdulillah are becoming connected to Allah. Although we've, we've said from the outset, Afia healing has got nothing directly to do with our deen. It's got nothing to do with praying. It's got nothing to do. But the blessing that we now have within it is that through it, people are finding Allah. Exactly. Exactly. And but, by the way, and by the way, you know, you have to also remember, you know, it, it just so happens that, um, you know, uh, Islam is not a religion. And each time we, we speak to the other people who are, who are out of Islam, they, they they understand religion it belongs to that that particular place of worship we tell them this is din i'm talking to you my interaction with you is part of my din exactly this is part of my worship exactly. the moment i make it for the sake of my god i've converted this act that is supposed to be very commercial into yes. into an ibadah yes. but i have decided that yes you see the point it is this that that uh, that's why there is there is such a great um, a uh, uh, pathway of uh, personal growth yeah. when it comes to this kind of thing. I yeah. personally feel that there is just so much, because you know, there's a lot of introspection. Yeah. You really, you know, you really have to ask yourself, what the heck are you doing? Exactly. 
Am I, am I the singer? Who do you think you are? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you and Iblis, are? Iblis is always sitting there, he's telling, oh, you're the greatest, my Mashallah. friend. <laughs> no, but Alhamdulillah, Mashallah, it's been amazing speaking to you. And uh, I look forward, inshallah, to having some more chats with you around these topics. Uh, I think we need to dig deep in a lot of what you have said. But Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. Um, so once again, inshallah, stay tuned. If you have any questions about uh, this uh, conversation that we've had with Dr. Shabir, then please feel free to get in touch, to leave your comments below. And inshallah, in the near future, again, you know, we will try and bring Dr. Shabir back on uh, to share his wisdom, his insight. But I think for me, most uh, humbling is the fact that someone of so much knowledge uh, that, you know, doesn't want to stop learning. Okay, and it doesn't matter where that knowledge comes from. So whether it's from us or whether it's from his niece who's studying, you know, to become a physicist, it's, we have to pick up and knowledge is from the cradle to the grave as the Prophet ﷺ said. And so if we can keep up this tradition, this sunnah, then inshallah, this is the way that our ummah becomes more empowered with knowledge and with understanding and wisdom so that at least the troubles that we are going through, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be able to remove that from us. So until then, inshallah, jazakumullah khair to everyone for joining us, for our guest, alhamdulillah, may Allah bless them, raise them, and increase them. And inshallah, we look forward to sharing with you uh, in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum.